Hello, and uh, welcome to my Hacker's Edge video, my second video here I'm, pu I'm putting up. This one's going to go through and explain um, the the website features that aren't normally that aren't normally available to uh, to the general to the general public. In that, so in this one, we're going to I want to show you the stuff on the left here you don't have access to normally, and guide you through some of the stuff there. So, site admin is obviously a new one. This one, if you if you're if you're a beta tester, you'll have access to send it invite codes, I believe. Uh, and then mission designer, we have the host templates. This is because I started creating this portion because there were some users out there that didn't like the complexity and wanted just to do missions and that they didn't want the they didn't want actually the hacking portion. They just want like a basic dumbed down hacking game like a lot of the other ones out there. So and and so as I was working on a mission thing where you can provision hosts, this might still end up in the game. So mission designers might still be able to eventually use this tool and do this and then in the game they would run a command based off of this. If you go to if you go to the templates here you'll notice that there's a slug. You use the slug test that test dash template in game with a command that will basically create it'll basically provision a host with these settings, right? And the settings are pretty straightforward. Your users, your access. There's more than this. This is, this is it was a, t a test template I was creating here just to set up a basic Host. This may still make it into the game because this would definitely be easier than if you watched the last video I made. It was at I did like I was doing um, at MK host and then I have to then you have to manually set things which you know can be annoying. So this tool might still make it into the game. This tool might just set the options a different way in that right. So but we'll see how things go. And there's of course the host files, host file section here as well. <clears throat> so now before I go into the site admin section. And show you that portion. I want to first go over here. This is another section that I have here. This is the project section. This is some. Um, eventually, there's going to be staff members who are going to have access to this, uh, excluding the source code section here. This literally accesses this. If you click here, you'll notice you can see the source code pieces, right? So, um, so here we have the. Here's a bunch. Here's a to-do list of a bunch of things that I've been putting up that I'm. I, finished lots of items. These are items that aren't finished. Items that are finished vanish off this list. So these are ideas that I've been that I've been going to be working on. One of the things I really want to add is a web-based file editor. So in game you run you run a certain command against the file. It gives you it basically gives you a URL that you can click and then you go to the website. It'll bring you to the website and you can edit the file, right? That was the idea behind that. And I'm still going to implement that at some point actually. Actually, that's turned into a higher priority now because since I'm starting to work on the kernel code and everything, having that would be very beneficial because without that, it's going to be difficult to start editing files more easier because right now I'm copying and pasting all the time back and forth because the in-game editor I built is honestly not that great for me to be using for that. And then another feature here is the add guide feature. This is for some some users in the like some some users that wanted to help out with writing instructions and that. This is like where they, the tool they would use, for example, they would enter a title of the game guide, the subject it should go into, and then they'd write the content, right? And they would create the create the new game guide that'll appear in the game guide section. Um, that's website admin section. Okay, so then we have the snippet viewer right here. Here is where I store a lot of the snippets. There are different ideas that I have. General game, a lot of these categories are still empty right now because I still haven't used this very much. So here we have like a snippet called booting, for example. You can pause the video right here if you actually really want to take a look and kind of understand how how my thoughts go, how my th how my train of thoughts going, and then jump table and things. I'm not going to click into all of them because I don't really want to show all these ideas right away. Everybody, some of these ideas are a bit more like these ones are quite complex. File I/O, memory mapping, and all this stuff is all here. Right, banking services is empty right now. Ranking service is empty at the moment because these are those are also these are also the same subjects in the, in the, in the to do list page as well. Okay, so now that I went through that, let's go through the the glorious site admin. This site admin does not admin the actual game game. This is just administers the site because the site and the game are rather separate. Besides, you have characters and that's really it. Besides that, you. You don't really have much more. I'm not going to go into a lot of stuff in here because there is some personal information that I can't expose, obviously, because there's like there's actual players' information in here, right? So I can't go through everything. I can go through the basics. So here is the it's a, it is based in Django, which is a Python framework. So I will not be going through the users, not going through the groups. I groups doesn't matter, I guess. Groups is just the groups I have created. And I won't go through that. These are just the game guides. They're pretty obvious. There's the forum stuff. It's quite obvious. This is the um, 
this is the which we call it one right this is for the that was for the new prod the new uh, mission editor project this is for the project manager hence PM project manager stuff these are I won't go through any of those things what's more interesting is characters I won't go into because that has that does have some some personal information that I won't I won't go into uh, invites are the invite codes I won't go in there because it also contains personal information um, user profiles um, I won't go into there either because that also contains personal information so the only way I can actually really show you in here is actually host pools how the host pools are configured so yeah I guess I really I can't show you too much yeah. <laughs> so in the host pools right now there's there's two host pools there's the beta pool that everybody in the game right currently the beta users have access to there's the pool name we have our network we have our counter we have our mail host and the DNS and the bank and if it's staff only or active right so if you notice when you log when you create a new character in the game it actually gives you an IP address in this network this is the counter so the next the next character the next character that's created is going to have number 46 it increments every time but what you, you're probably asking hmm so what if it gets above 254 what happens then it's smart enough once it once it gets past that number it'll actually Deact that's what is that there there's an active button here. It'll actually deactivate the host pool. So if a play, if a character so once the game goes live, there's gonna be many, many, many host pools. So and once one host pool is ex extinguished, there's gonna be a few left. Because I'm you know, there's gonna be more pop there's gonna be more popping up. Like as time goes on, I'll be adding more and more host pools into there from new networks. So there's quite a lot there's quite a few different networks in the in IP version four, so I shouldn't have to wait losing wait, running out of IP addresses in this game. Yeah, that's what the first person said about IP version four, right? Uh, but anyway, so that is the back end stuff that I can actually show you. I would like to show you the more personal actually I guess I could. Yeah, I guess I could. I want to go into the into uh, into this into the actual local admin here. So here is a non-personal information based one. I can show you the stuff in here easily. This is this is purely uh, ah, I'm missing some stuff, aren't I? Huh, that's strange. I might not have synced the database maybe for that. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. They're in here. For, I don't know. They're in here for some reason. I guess the settings files are different on the server than on my local box. Um, but these files don't really matter. Those don't really matter anyways. What I was going to show you, and what I was going to show in here, was well, I won't, I won't, users is regular Django users. If you see, if you know Django, you know what that is. Um, I'm going to go into the characters, for example. So in the characters, I get to see a nice overview of the characters, right? The, the user, the, the user, the characters attached to, the host IP address, and when it, when the character was created. I just created this one recently, so let's click onto him. So when you click onto him, passwords are all hashed, right? They're all hashed and salted, so I kind of can't reverse those um, and then we have the IP address the mail host the bank that, that this user that this character is attached to and the mail host char the character is attached to for mailing reasons and then the last login time as well and then the time is played so that's a basic user on how on well, the char a basic character so now an invites there's a few example invites I was play testing here there's, a, there's placed on like say I use this I use this if I want to place it on certain locations it tells me when it, when that invite was taken it tells me when it was created it tells me who took which user ended up taking the invite and that the actual code itself now under generate invite at the very top right you'll see it we generates a new code and then this this is the user that would occur that would that would, that would be attached to the user that created if if a user created the invite and where I placed it on so as you can tell I have a bunch of different places that I can specify there um, and next user profiles this part here is where I, is where where I can actually configure if they have beta if they have game access right now it's used for beta which is probably going to be this feature is going to be removed eventually once the game goes completely live out of beta but this dictates whether you have access to the beta or not type of thing if you don't have access to the beta you have to have an invite code to enable this option here and then a character limit as time goes on, these limits might increase. It all depends, right? What's going to happen? Um, let's go to one of the users, for example. So this user here has game access, as you can tell. It even tells me the total games a user has had, so I can tell exactly how many times you've played my damn game. <laughs> kind of, kind of sounds kind of snoopy, but still, you know, I liked it's good. It's statistics. 
it tells it gives me an idea on how many times a certain character plays or like this character here master k 361 times i've been play testing a lot just to be able to work out kinks and bugs my original my main user 65 there as well and this user here this is my first user i think it's only 52 yeah because this is an admin user i think or no it's not an admin user no no, no. this is this is the admin this is an admin user yeah it's an admin user um but yeah so but that is the that is the back end in a nutshell. So there you have it. Um, that is the Hacker's Edge website admin tools. Um, but eventually, if you end up become moderators or staffs, you might actually gain you might actually get access to eventually. Uh, okay, I am done. Thanks for watching.